example, treats, rapes boys, Dachon, because of his deep hatred for the Jewish race or Jewish religion and Catholics. See, he's, he's a fake. He's a hypocrite. He calls himself a Christian, yet his words are so poisonous. Carpe diem. Seize the day, right? Dead Poet Society. And make your day extraordinary. My encouragement to you is that you seize your tongue and make it extraordinary. You need to go home and tell your wives tonight a good word. You may need to tell your children a good word. Psychologists have said that it takes eight compliments to override one insult. Eight. Many of us have probably don't even have enough time to say one, much less eight. Proverbs 18.21 says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. Which one will you choose? Which one will you seize? What will your tongue be? Verse 9, with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing my brothers. These things ought not to be this way. Your tongue is not only to be sized. It is not only to be seized. It is to be used to shout praises to God. This is not a both and. This is an either or. Either you're going to choose to use it to bless, or you can choose to use it to curse. How funny that the word in verse 9, bless and blessing, would be the word eulogia. Some of you may have heard Danny, Daniel, uh, Dr. Daniel Aiken preach on this word briefly in his sermon in Revelation. The idea of eulogia is where we get the word eulogy. How ironic that in the English language we use it when a person dies. Right? How many of you heard of bad eulogy? I've never heard of a bad, bad eulogy. Every eulogy is good. Yet we wait until death to speak words of praise to somebody who has died. The immortalized saying, some of you may have gone to funerals and done funerals, and you always hear a family member say, say these very words, I wish I would have said fill in the blank. We wait until the very last moment before we say a good word. Guys, many of your wives, some of your children are craving a good word. You need to give it to them. There is a Turkish day and a French king in 1827 who fought over a piece of wheat. Uh, I'm sorry, a harvest of wheat. Uh, the Turkish day is a governor, and a French king obviously <coughs> is higher than a Turkish day. They owned this piece of land because they were sharing the harvest. And so one day they got into the squabble to decide what to do with it. And in the end, they couldn't come to a conclusion because the Turkish day just wouldn't stop insulting the French king. So the French king decided, I'm going to send a whole army and wipe you out. He did. For the simple fact that he dis, that the Turkish day simply disrespected the French king. Words of praise. And how often we reserve it. Just, you know, for God, it seems like we just reserve it on Sunday morning. But after, what happens after Sunday morning? What happens from Monday through Saturday to the casual Christian? seems like we make this two-faced change and we, we, we act less Christ-like during the week than we do on Sunday morning. Verse, verse 11 to 12, keep this in mind. We have to use our tongue in such a way that it exercises maturity to God. We have to size it, we have to seize it, and we have to shout praises. And James ends it in this way, verse 11 and 12. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, produce olives? or a vine produce figs, nor can salt water produce fresh. In the Greek, you really get a, 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 a chance to understand how verse 11 starts. It starts with a negative particle, which means the question already begins with you understanding it to be no. No. Your tongue cannot speak both blessing and cursing. It's not a both and. It's either or. You have to wrestle with this. And, and, and in verse 11, there is one 
verb, send out. You may have burst forth, you may have gush forth, but, but whatever it is, it is a, it is a hapax. It is, it is a verb that only appears once throughout all the scriptures. And it's very important that you understand this because this will blow your mind. He selected this word for this very reason alone. This word comes from the, the idea of a bud, of a plant that's about to burst forth when spring arrives. But before it bursts forth, it is collecting all these healthy nutrients from the roots. But it starts from deep within the ground. Luke 6.45 says this. Jesus said this to his disciples. The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth what is good. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth what is evil. For his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. If your mouth is the budding plant, your heart is the root. So what is planted deep within that heart of yours today that keeps you from speaking words of praise, words of life? Use your tongue in such a way that it exercises maturity in worship to God. You need to size it. You need to seize it. And you need to use it to shout praises to God. I'll end with this. In 1862, there was a famous poem. Some of you may have used it when you were kids. And it goes something like this. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. And as you all know, that's the biggest lie you were ever told. You see, that quote was told from black pastors to, to a black audience, telling them, it doesn't matter what the whites think of you, just brush it off. No matter what they call them, the N-word, they, so, they were so hated that they would build separate bathrooms because they called them disease and an infestation to humankind. You notice the power of words and how damaging it can be. It literally almost destroyed an entire race. And if you don't seize it, if you don't size it and use it to shout praise, you may even destroy your family. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this, this message. And God, this, this is something I'm struggling with, God. And um, I need you to help me with it. But I also ask you to challenge my brothers here, Lord, to use our tongue in such a way that it glorifies you and it magnifies who you are in us. May we draw from that spring and may it burst forth in words of life. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.